Hello, and welcome to another episode of Hairbrain Games. Today we're going to do a review of Underwater Cities by Vladimir Sushi. I'm sure I mangled that one. Uh, Underwater Cities is a building game where you are given your own little player mat of undersea goodness. And under those seas, you're going to build a series of cities and connect those cities and... Uh, in, the, in the, the ultimate game being to attempt to get the most victory points for building the best city. Along the way, you'll acquire a variety of resources. You will use cards and card action slots to be able to put together various schemes by which to get farther than your opponents in building the best underwater cities of all. Now, I'm, all, I'm going to do a review of underwater cities by itself, sort of, but I'm also going to incorporate certain elements of the expansion, New Discoveries. This is not going to take everything about new discoveries and review it. Uh, one of the reasons is that this expansion is a modular set of various uh, additions and uh, some of which I've already incorporated which you will see being played out, some of which I haven't. Uh, there's the the Undersea Museum, etc, etc. Um, basically this, this expansion is one that could kind of seamlessly, you could throw extra cards, extra pieces and whatever just right into the base game and play. It has very, very good player mats that I would not I would not play underwater cities without those mats. They're that good at keeping together the, the composition of your cities. Uh, but I'm not going to call this a straight-up review of both because I simply didn't incorporate both. So with that, let's take a look at underwater cities. Okay, let's take a gander in the components of underwater cities. First off, we'll go right to left this time. Uh, we have underwater cities, the manual. <coughs> The manual has plenty of great resources. It's glossy, which means that if you want to play a little mini game, you can try to read it while staring at a light. Uh, but lots and lots of detail. Everything's pretty well laid out. There's a there's a good flow to the manual. You'll kind of understand everything you'll need to do. Um, nice summaries. We'll just leave it at that. There you go. <clears throat> Because I'm doing this as a combination with Underwater Cities, you do get an extra pamphlet with a few extra things that kind of describe the specific uh, information about the expansion that is different and not just simply throwing more stuff in the original box. <clears throat> then you have the player board itself. The player board itself is chock-filled of colored goodness. You have a lot going in here, but we'll break it down. Each of these sides here, green, red, yellow, are the action slots. This is where you're going to be like originating uh, one of your uh, one of your turns when you play. Uh, we'll get into that later. There's a card and action slot combination move that happens every time. And each of these has a different special ability or special action that it will let you perform um, in various ways. They won't make sense iconographically until we go over the flow a little bit and kind of go over what is even possible. But suffice to say, you have green, red, and yellow, and you also have end game cards. These are for cards that you will eventually want to purchase at the end of the game. They have this timer on them that says what you can do to earn victory points, because in the end of the day, it's about victory points. So these, almost all these will generate victory points for you. You also have other special cards that can also play an impact. They're a little more powerful cards than the standard deck that you'll have that you can take as well from this group here. There's one, one and two cost and three cost, uh, three, three credits basically. And this is the, the three decks. There's three eras and uh, corresponding to the track. So this will be era one, production, era two, and production, era three, production, final scoring. These cards all have different things. Now, one thing to note is that you don't have to worry about the top and the bottom being... Um, <coughs> You know, different. Basically, this is the iconography, and this gives you a language equivalent of what that iconography is. So it's actually pretty cool. I've gotten much more at ease with the iconography by simply knowing I can look down here and see exactly what it says. Whenever you gain, whenever you use the always available action slot, which is uh, on the board, well, then you gain two steel plast. I mean, that's pretty simple. And pretty soon you'll look at the iconography and go, yep, I know what that means. Uh, once again, they're all in three different colors, uh, red, green, and blue. Now, the interesting thing about this is that the power or the potency of the actions of green, red, and yellow are inversely proportional to the potency of the cards, uh, red, green, and yellow. By that, I mean that uh, if you play a certain, a certain color 
uh, card, its corresponding action slot will be inversely proportional as far as what they believe would be uh, the the value, you know, the, the relative strength of that card. Once again, and then we have beyond that a player mat. This is where you're going to spend the majority of your time. Each player has a player mat. I have the new expansions embossed ones. I would not even remotely play without it. I played with the originals, and all my stuff was sliding all over the place. And so when the opportunity came to get these nicely, nicely uh, indented. Uh, mats, I jumped at the chance. So uh, you'll start here and you'll be able to build out more underwater cities, underwater cities with buildings. You'll build up buildings on this buildings. Everyone's going to get a custom uh, one of these metropolises that metropoli that that if you connect your tunnels to, because there's also slots for tunnels. So you build your building, you build your, your little your little cities here, and then you build subways or tunnels to them you can upgrade tunnels too and get victory points on and on uh, and then buildings you upgrade buildings etc etc uh, everybody starts with a, a helper you can have up to four cards in play at a given time and uh, using that is pretty as one of the core keys to victory here once again lots and lots of i can argue but it's not that hard in order to build a a, a kelp plant well it costs you a kelp to begin with and then during production phase you can get a kelp if you upgrade it you get a kelp and a victory point if you do a double whammy and get two upgraded kelp plants in the same city you're going to get mega bonus points so at the same time that will cut into your victory points at the end of the game something to keep in mind and so this once once you get through the first couple turns you're going to be seeing this more naturally because right now it would look like a uh, an m, m abacus if you don't know what you're doing and finally you have tons and tons of components lovely components these formulate the buildings and they're nice and nice and circular and see-through so that you can see all the people inside them har har these are the tunnels that you'll place upgrade you'll get extra points but you place these these are important because only connected cities will do much to benefit you um this is kelp plants this is research and this is salination plants uh, they give you money kelp and steel plast research you use these a lot of these these um when you accrue laboratory tokens they help upgrade your buildings. This is kind of a wild card. Uh, it's worth some cool victory points at the end of the game if you keep them, but if not, you can also use them to uh, upgrade to in exchange of some of the other resources. They're kind of a wild card. Plus, you also need them to build this, these special purple cities. Purple cities give you victory points during during uh, courses of the game. So they're a little, if you can't afford them, it's usually better. And then you have the resources, the kelp, the steel blast, uh, and then the credits. And once again, you've got these nice colored dumps. And this, these are the uh, the tiles that you will get, everyone will get randomly and place them in there. If you can connect up to them, you're going to get a, a bonus. Actually, this clips up here um and then in other ones if you can connect up you can get whatever's on there so good stuff good stuff and that's it for the basic gist of it now i'm going to be setting up a one player game just because i'm going to expedite the playthrough to give you a chance to see without trying to simulate two at a time um, in the one player game there's not much more to it other than it just blocks off spots uh, sequentially and it just kind of leaves you up to hold a high score in multiplayer play people will be taking these action tokens and they'll have three rounds how it'll go is every round every round you'll play three of your three of your action slots what well, i'm already playing the game well, let's get to the playthrough this is just components, silly me. All right, let's play. Okay, at the start of the game, every player gets six cards to choose from, from the first era action deck. First era. All right, so from this, we choose three to keep, and only three. So looking at this, once again, you're not going to know initially kind of what to do, but other than to say that playing these cards puts them down into your tableau to be used when they are triggered. So these, these can be triggered once every round. So uh, there are three rounds, three errors in the game. And so you'll want to use these strategically at just the right time. That's how you can play the A cards. On the other hand, you can also play these sort of instant cards. And the instant cards will just say, there you go, take the bonus, get on with your life, and discard them. And there are other cards that can be played that will only benefit you by providing extra production during the one of the three production phases. So keep that in mind as you're deciding. The other thing is we don't have any yellow. Now, that's 
not our favorite. The best thing you can do is take the same color card and use it on the same colored action slot. If you don't, then you're effectively just ditching a card to be able to use the action slot. Let's go through that now. I'm going to keep this one, this one, and nope. I'm going to keep these three. That gives me a red and it gives me a green. The rest I'm simply going to discard. All right. All right. On my turn, and it's going to go pretty... In single player, this stuff goes pretty rapidly. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to decide which action slot I want to use. Now, in the single player games, again, they're blocked out by this imaginary creature called opponent AI. But we are going to take our token and decide what we're going to do with it. If we put it on green... Do we have enough resources? We don't have enough resources to build a city yet. We're going to need some more. So let's do this. We'll place that there, and that's going to be our action slot. And then we are going to use this card in, in tandem for the action slot. Now you can do action slot or card, or a card or action slot. You can't mix and match them. Grab a resource, grab a thing. No, you have to choose one or the other and do it. In this case, it's not really a difficult thing. What you're going to get is I get two of these building building blasts. Look at that. Steel blasts. And I get a kelp. Kelp, kelp, I'm being oppressed. And that covers that action. And I get two credits. Two credits could be valuable for buying stuff later. Look at that. I'm already ahead of the pack. And that's discarded because it is uh, an instant action. And that's it. That's the end. On a, in a more than one player game, the next person would go and they would place their their token somewhere that was available because once once it's blocked, it's blocked. But the last thing I do is always draw a card. You always draw a card, even if you have extra cards. When you start your turn, you have to drop down to three cards. Uh, so keep that in mind. You always keep three cards, but you can temporarily have more than that. Oh, look at that. Once again, we are at red. So what is our next choice? And don't forget, everyone starts with an action. Now, this is the, the expansion pack gives everyone the opportunity to get a custom starter action card, and that's pretty cool. This one would have let me start with resources had I remembered it, uh, but I can also use an action at any time to build one of these buildings and start my, the ball rolling. In this case, I think I'm going to... Hmm... I'm actually going to do that. So, But to use an action, you have to find a spot that lets you use an action. You can't just use them whenever you want. you got to find the special spot. The special purpose. Alright, so I'm going to put that there. And I'm going, to ins I'm going to play this action card here. Um, there you go. Yep. All right, there we go. Now I have two of four cards that I can use uh, when I trigger an action spot some point later in the game. I can even trigger it right now, I do believe. Um, but first thing, look. I, so I, I've paid the, the card and I've chosen the slot. Now I can choose what to do. Um, I don't have it. It's not an instant action, so I'm going to use this. I can build a tunnel. A tunnel is going to cost me one of my new steel blasts and one token. That's why I did what I did. So these go back in. And I build a tunnel. Where am I going to build a tunnel? Well, I'm going to like try to build it here. You know why? Because covering this over gives me that resource. Now I have a laboratory. Look at that. I'm getting richer by the move. Um, and this also lets me trigger one of my actions. One of my actions could be building, or it could be uh, paying our science or credit to upgrade one of my desalination plants. Uh, I'm going to build a... I am going to take and use a credit, and I'm going to build a desalination plant. Now, I can build them in, in various places around here, but generally, you want to build them where they're connected, so I built that. That means during the production phase, I am going to get whatever bonus that provides, which basically right now gives me my credit back, or credit credit back my yeah my credit back and then I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees it is out of play until I choose uh, until the next the next era so but this action could be valuable because this lets me upgrade it by by uh yeah actually that's one of the ways to upgrade it so there you go and that's second turn now I have a final action of this turn phase and that is going to be interesting but first I'm going to draw a card and see what I'm going to get Ah, we still have red. Man, this action's interesting. It would give me two cards and a kelp. Kelp, kelp. Oh, I already used that one. All right. 
And so I am going to, I am going to choose to use this. And I will do, and I will actually go ahead and, and use it and lay down this card. Because maybe I do want kelp. Maybe I do want cards. Gives me more options. So with that laid down, I now can use my action. It lets me build two uh, research plants, whatever they call them, or two, uh, and that's green, two kelp plants. Now the cost for kelp is two. The cost for uh, building these is two. Right now I think I'm going to do this. I'm going to build, use these two, and I'm going to build two here. Yay, look at that. On the one hand, I've made it easy for myself because if I can upgrade both of those, I'm going to get a serious amount of resources during the production phase. On the other hand, you get all extra bonus points if every if your cities have one of each resource. So right now, I don't have a green kelp plant. If I had one of each kind, then at the end of the game, it's worth six points. But right now, I'm just starting off, and it's not a bad idea to be thinking of generating resources um, even as much as one would consider uh, scoring points for the end game. So there we go. I have done my last and final action. There we go. And now I'm going to draw up to three cards again. I'm still at green, no yellows. I'm going to pretend this doesn't happen. Where's there? I'm going to pretend I have a yellow just so you can see what a yellow card looks like. All right, now we go to round two or to, to uh, the second stage or second round, um, we grab these, grab these, because we're back to round two, it's ten rounds in the game, so there's, you have 30 moves, and it, and it does snowball, so you start to feel powerful a little bit, oh darn it, I'm already reviewing it, all right, so that stays there, because it only has to, has to go up at the end of the era, and so now we would start off again, we don't have uh, we would, well, this is solo play, so we're going to move all these over by one. And the general rule of single player is if you don't actually make any progress on the Federation track, then you have to also block one more out by reading this bottom number. I believe that's 12. I can't see it like that. So we're going to go 12. Count them up. One, two, three. One, two, three. So, great. The one, the one... One of the two places where I could build a city is no longer available to me. That's okay. All right. So now we would start again. We would continue the ball rolling. We would we would uh, take a look at what we have and decide what we want to do. Right now, I would like to use an action. I really would. Yes, I would. All right. This one says... I can pay one science and one steel blast to upgrade one of my desalination plants, but I don't have any right now. So I'm going to do the unthinkable, and I'm going to e use the red card. I'm going to have to discard it because I want to do this action instead. And I, that lets me build a uh, tunnel if you don't. Again, this is not this is definitely not optimal play, but it does let me use an action, and the action I'm going to use is this, which lets me draw two cards and get a kelp. Kelp is useful for a few things. It's very important for feeding your workers at the end of each production round. So each city that's connected, you have to pay a kelp or you lose victory points or resources and then victory points. Um, but I also get to draw two cards. That gives me two options. Yay! And then that's it. That's the end of that. So then I drop. And now I decide which three I want to keep. Ooh, if I have at least two connected cities, I gain... I gain a uh, steel plast. That's kind of cool. This just flat out gives me a coin or uh, uh, some credits, and it lets me bump up on the vict on the federation track. I like this because it lets me convert research to kelp. But right now, I'm not really needing kelp too badly. And this one, I can pay one steeple uh, or steel fest to build one tunnel. Now that's okay, but I'm going to definitely want to use some uh some thinking here so i would take my i would actually yeah, i have to discard down to three so we're gonna get rid of this and get rid of this there you go okay now we're down to three so now we get to decide all right now i am going to use my next action token 
to go here. This lets me take two resources, but they have to be different resources. They can't be all the same. I'm going to take a steel plast, and I'm going to take a laboratory. There we go. At least I've got something going on. And I also get an action that I can use. And the action that I have left is to pay one science or one credit to upgrade one of my salination plants. I'm going to do that. So I'm going to pay one science that I just got. How handy is that? And I'm going to upgrade this desalination plant. Now I have... Look at that. Happy, happy. And now that it's upgraded, when production time comes, I will get not only a credit, but I'm also going to get one of these wild card uh, resource types. Handy for a lot of different things. All right. And that's it. Oh, wait. No, I had to... I had to use this in order to, I, I used the yellow card in conjunction, silly me. And because I can do them in either order, well, I don't get to use the action. I could have, but I won't, but I'm just going to set that there. In the future, when I use an action, I'll be able to use a steel plast to build a tunnel. Uh, and that's cheaper. It's cheaper to do it that way. All right. Now we draw back up to three. And now we have our last opportunity. And of course, everything's red. Once again, we don't have to. If we really want to use one of the other colors, we can. It's just that we're starving ourselves of the ability to, to leverage any of these actions. And in this case, um, in this case, I could do a building, but I can build a farm on an expansion site. That means a site that's away. Uh, from an actual city or I can do this. I'm just going to do this. I'm going to use this and I'm going to do a special card. There we go. So it doesn't, and this order is not too bad, but I go up on the Federation track. As you go up, you get the benefits too. So if you get, went from, from four, three, two, one, you get all three of these benefits. Went up on the expansion track and I get a, and I get a token. And that's that. And I'm just going to go ahead and discard that now. Um, and then I get an opportunity to take either one of these cards or one of these cards. Now I can take, uh, th I can put this underneath and, and grab three and take one two, or I could just take this one. I like this one. And unfortunately, I'm going to, I mean, I'm, I'm at three spots, so four spots, so I would have to ditch one. So I'm going to place that, but when I discard a card to go down to it, if I haven't used it yet, I can use it before I get rid of it. This is sort of like a last, a last ditch gas, like, a, you know, so at least you have an opportunity to use it. If I want to do this, I can pay one, one of these steel plasts to build a tunnel. I'm not going to do that, but I could have. And that's one of the things that's kind of cool is that you, if you buy a card and then you find yourself it getting butted out, you still have a chance to use it. I could have gotten rid of some of these other two, but they've already been used, so they wouldn't have been activated. And this, during the production phase, will now give me one of the special, the uh, um, the special sort of wild card resource types and a credit and two victory points. So that's actually a pretty powerful card. Um, I have to pay. Ah, uh, that's right. I have to pay. Huh. Okay. Well, we did that a little out of order, but I have to pay the, the credit cost to play it. So, um, I didn't do that. I mean, I just grabbed one. I didn't actually use it as an action yet. So technically everything rolls back and I wouldn't have had to have gotten rid of that. That this would just go in my hand when the time came for me to put it down though. The same rules apply. You can use an unused card in a last ditch effort. There we go. And that is the end of the second turn. Now you're going to do this for three, four turns, and you're going to go into a production phase. Production's the same thing. You're going to look and say, right now this is pretty measly, but if you had kelp farms, you'd get kelp. If you had uh, salination, you'd get credits. If you have uh, the white buildings or, or the research buildings, you'll get, you'll get uh, science resources. You're going to get a lot of resources coming up and bubbling up, uh, particularly in the second and third cons uh production phases because by then you'll have a pretty thriving underwater city market area which means you're going to be getting a lot of resources and the more resources you get the more you can build this sort of compounds and builds um, as you do the production also cities if i was to create a red city it costs a little extra resources i'll get victory points for it every production round uh, i also have 
you know, there's, yeah, any, any of the other, there's a whole chart, like I said, this, this all nails it down for you quite nicely once you understand what's going on. When you are done with that, every production era, though, remember that for each city, you will have to pay a kelp back to Mother Nature. Um, so you do that, and then once we start in the second round, you're going to get second round cards, and those are a little bit more powerful. They do a few more interesting things, and the same thing with the third round. You're going to have third round cards, and these are quite a bit mightier. And by the third round, you're probably going to want to be looking at these cards, too, because they'll give you opportunities for sort of mega points, a big boost of points as you're going around. I found, personally, in my games thus far, that, you know, the first the first few turns, it's slow, and then it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and then by the end, you're just, there's a ton of points that you've accrued at the end, so. And that's kind of an example of play. It's not entirely uh, invasive, or not invasive, but, but deep, but hopefully it gives you kind of an idea of what you're going to be doing when you're playing underwater cities, with or without the expansion. All right, let's get to my final thoughts. Okay, well, let's talk about my final thoughts on underwater cities with the variable elements of the expansion pack. Now, before I get into the final thoughts, I do want to reiterate, what I gave you was a very small beginning example of the mechanisms and machinations and the gameplay flow. It is not a complete game through, and this game really deserves one. If you really want to understand the game in its entirety, start to finish, and really see the progression of the game, I highly recommend taking a look at uh, Slicker Dips, uh, review on YouTube. There was also um, uh, John Gets Games, I believe. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, a gaming rules review. Yeah, there are several uh, really good gameplay examples. I don't think I did it entire justice, but hopefully I at least give you an idea of what you're getting into when you play the game. Um, and with that, let's get to the review part. As for the cons of the game, I would say that uh, there was... There is a, an initial small con points of confusion on intermixing the cards with the action slots. Uh, the action slots, and then there's actions on the cards. They're overlapping, but not identical. There was an initial kind of confusion getting over that small bump. Not a big deal. Uh, the solo game is not really meant to simulate opponents, so don't be looking for that as something where it's got an advanced AI or some sort of uh, you know, really impressive way to simulate humans. In the end, it's uh, it's entertaining because it's kind of puzzle solving. Uh, you're maximizing cards that you against it. But I would treat the solo game, or I consider the solo game, to be very different from multiplayer. And that it really, what it's really doing is basically just putting up roadblocks and saying, "How well can you do with these roadblocks that are occurring around you?" Uh, nothing sentient, to put it that way. Uh, the other thing is, initially, it will look more overwhelming than it really is. It's not. It really does flow well. But when I set it out on the table and you finally get everything out there, you you know it is it is it can look daunting. Uh, it's bright colors, tinsel town sprawl of icons and primary colors and opportunities, kind of like reminds me of Coimbra, but you know, but with with much more. Um, and to clarify, by the second turn, you pretty much know what you're doing, and uh, it's just a matter of what you want to do rather than how you do anything. Uh, the expansion. And like I said, I'm mixing it a little bit. It has modules that help. Uh, this uh, feeling that you're starting slow, there is a kind of a feeling that, I don't know, for you, you, you do start very small. And anyone who's played, say, Civilization knows you start off with really small and you grow out. Um, and that first initial kind of time, there's not a ton to really feel like doing. I don't think it's, it's anything uh, ding-worthy here. Uh, you know, it does feel to me like a little bit of a glacial start. Uh, but that's the time to, you know, to begin maximizing what you've got. You've got your cars options, you've got your, your action slot options. So just, just realize that if you want to kind of speed up the game a little bit, you might want to go ahead and take, take the expansion and use some of its kind of boost cards that start you off rolling. As for the pros, I really like something that this game does that I have not seen in other places, and that is eye context duplication. I have a real hard, like, there's no... I, there's no way of getting around it or putting it nicely. It is much harder to teach people games through icons than it is words. That has just been way too consistent for me to to just slough it off. Now there are very good i very good games that that really do a good job with being consistent and clear with their iconography, but this does something where you look at the icons 
But if you don't know what it does, you look down at the bottom of the card and it just tells you in English language. And that is so important when you're teaching this game because there's not a you're not spending that time, that extra layer of indirection going, before I know what to do, I gotta know what these interpret. And then when I interpret these icons, then I'll know what to do. And then I'll start looking for what I wanna do, not just what I can do. And uh, this removes one of those layers of duplication. Just a fantastic add-on. I mean, you know, I know that it, I, I, yeah, it's great. The icons are good. You won't have a problem. After a while, you will be able to just look at the top, and you won't even need to read the text. But that it's there is hugely important for me. And comboing is a big deal, too. Learning how to take your action slots and the cards that you're playing, put them together, figure out what order you want to do them in to be able to maximize and play them off of each other. Because as you get benefits from cards, you can turn around and fuel those benefits right back into another card. In some ways, it reminds me of gizmos a bit, where you're building sort of machinations, except here, you're building machinations that give you uh, resources that help you produce buildings, with then, you know, trigger effects. You could have cards that have effects that trigger uh, additional benefits and bonuses. There's there's not a ton of drawback here. This is, as, as I've seen in, in a few games, it's not not a game that has a ton of like oh you're you know like like attack kind of thing it's not it's all about building up and doing maximizing your opportunities and whoever maximizes the most will will win um so that part I do like a lot. The city building and expanding is at its heart pretty simple but it's really rewarding to both metaphorically and literally because you're building up your your little your little globules nice tangible pieces glob you know underwater cities building the tunnels doing the things and you're seeing it come to life uh, very tangibly and they you know each board being different sometimes you'll you'll put something down and you'll get a reward sometimes you'll have to pay a little extra uh, but you know see it feels like in this journey there's a lot of gift shops along the way during the 10 fit you know 10 era 10 rounds of the game, where you're going to be like, oh, I can buy this, ooh, now I can buy that, ooh, I can go over here and do this, that's great, that's great. Um, the game is, you know, it's it's got tons of things to do, and the ending is not too abrupt, I think it gives plenty of time, you get opportunities to do a lot of things, it's not something that's going to go, Whoom, you're done, uh, you know, you, you had a scarcity of turns, I hope you did the best you could, something's probably incomplete, and that's true, it could happen. Um, but yeah, and the other thing is you could get caught in some fun distractions going, oh, I really want to build this because it just looks so cool. So beware of that if you're someone who likes to meander through the through the waters of uh, indecision, just looking for fun things to do. Uh, but those are the pros. So in summary, in some ways, I, I, I kind of waited on this a while to do the review because one of the, there's a phenomenon that happens when I'm reviewing games and it's it's kind of a problem when games follow on the heels of other games. There's a tendency to kind of skew feelings based on those games before it. It's it's like if you watch uh, you know Marvel Endgame and then you go watch Shazam, you're like, eh, okay, uh, maybe Shazam was a pretty good movie, but I just watched Endgame and so I kind of skewed myself. I have to try really hard to be careful about that. For example, Marvel Heroes, which I didn't do a review of, had followed right after Street Masters. Street Masters being this awesome like game where you've got custom characters, this big map, you've got awesome, like really cool missions, and that, that play off each other on this board, and you're playing just tons of stuff, um, and it sort of like made uh, Marvel Heroes not as cool to me once I got a decent game, but it kind of skewed it. Uh, whereas if I hadn't played Street Masters, that would have happened. Same thing with Teo Tehuacan. Uh, I played Coimbra first and had a blast, and then set up Teo Tehuacan, and I think Teo Tehuacan, Teo Teo Tehu that game is probably better. A lot of it's certainly more vast and more, you know, with a lot of replayability. But for some reason, Coimbra just kind of like made you know, changes for me. So I had to be careful because I just finished playing Maracaibo, which I consider one of my favorite games that came out in 2019 and still am playing it in January. And so then Underwater Cities has some, but not identical similarities. Uh, and so in previous cases, I wouldn't finish reviews of those games because... I just didn't want to taint it, or I didn't want to have an experience where I wasn't giving a game a fair shake, um, or I didn't feel like I was up to, up to the task. I would rather not do that than to tend to just put reviews out to put reviews out. But Underwater Cities was definitely good enough that I felt very comfortable doing the review even afterwards. And I'm like, this is going on way too long, so I need to like cut it short. But in in uh, in Underwater Cities. Um, 
you have a nice crescendoing pace of playing, and that is a big deal. You start off small, you grow, you grow, you grow, you grow. Uh, it, there's a brain thinking plan of action that you've got to take, taking disparate possibilities and forging the best way through those possibilities to get the largest positive net gain. The accomplishment factor of building these cities and watching them sprawl out and connecting them is kind of like the Zen Tetris-like experience. You get lots of bonuses, lots of windfalls. The expansion for me is a must if for no other reason than, the, than the, those great mats um, and the extra content, although it does make for a, a pricey investment. Uh, for example, you know, yeah, I, yeah, that would make a price investment. But all in all, I think Underwater Cities is a thoroughly solid, well-respected addition to the board game industry. And on that front, I say thank you, and we'll see you next time on Hairbrain Games. Thank you.